Hello, my dear students. Today, I want to share a little story with you, my story. I know that learning a new language like English is not easy. There are moments when you feel tired or maybe even think of giving up. But I want you to remember one thing. If there were no challenges, success would have no meaning. Let me tell you, failure is not the end. It's just a part of the journey. Every time I faced a challenge, I felt stronger. And today, I stand here not only as a teacher, but as a successful entrepreneur. But my life was not always like this. Part 2. My Dream When I was young, around 15 years old, I had a dream. My dream was to become a teacher, a language teacher. I loved English. The way English words sounded was like music to my ears. I dreamed of a day when I could teach others, help them learn and maybe change their lives. Teaching felt like a calling like something deep inside me that I had to follow. But life was hard. My family did not have a lot of money, and sometimes I had to help them with small jobs. I worked in a shop after school, selling clothes and learning about life. Even though I was busy, my dream stayed with me. I studied every day, sometimes late into the night, even when I was very tired. My Many Failures Life tested me many times. Every time I thought I was close to my dream, something would go wrong. But each time, I learned to stand up again. The first big failure came when I was 18. I wanted to go to university to become an English teacher. I studied so hard, spending long nights with my books. I felt confident, but when the results came, I failed. I remember the shock. It felt like someone had taken my dream and broken it into pieces. I cried for days. I thought, maybe I am not good enough. Maybe my dream is impossible. But I could not let go of my dream. I decided to try again. I worked in a small shop in our town to save money for study materials. I spent every extra penny on books and classes. After a year, I took the test again. This time I felt ready, sure that I would succeed. Then, life surprised me again. My father got very sick, and we did not have enough money for his treatment. so. I had to stop my studies. All my savings went to pay for his medicine. I wanted to be strong, but inside, I felt hopeless. It was like every time I tried to climb up, life pulled me back down. I felt trapped, and the dream of becoming a teacher felt like it was slipping away. Part 4 A New Hope and another fall. After my father recovered, I decided to try one more time. I was a bit older now, with more responsibilities, but I still wanted to be a teacher. I got a small job in a school library where I could be close to books and students. This job gave me hope again. I felt that maybe life was giving me another chance. However, after a few months, the school had to close. They did not have enough funds, and suddenly, I was jobless. I remember walking home that day, feeling lost and tired. I asked myself, why does life keep testing me? Why do I have to suffer so much? But every time I fell, something inside me refused to give up. I told myself, if I stop now, I will never know if I could have made it. So, 
I started teaching English to children in my neighborhood. It was a small start, but it gave me a purpose. Teaching those children reminded me why I loved this language and this work. Part 5 A Final Setback and a New Beginning Years later, I finally got a chance to join a teaching program. It felt like a miracle. But during the training, I struggled. My classmates were younger and knew English better than me. Sometimes they would laugh at my mistakes. I felt ashamed, thinking, maybe I don't belong here. Maybe this is not my path. One evening, I nearly quit. I was packing my bags, ready to leave, when I remembered my young students from the neighborhood. I thought of their happy faces when they learned a new word, their pride when they could say a full sentence. I realized that if I gave up, I would be giving up on them too. So I unpacked my bags and decided to stay. I worked harder than ever, practicing my English late at night, repeating words and phrases until they felt right. Slowly, my English improved, and I passed the training. Today, as a teacher, I know that all those failures were lessons. Each time life knocked me down, I got back up. Now, I share my success with my husband and my two children. I am not only a teacher, but also a successful entrepreneur, helping my community and supporting other young people who dream of learning English. Remember, my dear students, every fall can be a step toward success if you decide to stand up again. Don't let failures stop you. Let them guide you. Part 6. My Language Learning Methods Today, I want to share my favorite language learning methods. These are special ways that helped me on my journey to learn English, and I have taught these to many of my students. Each method has its own story, a story of a student who faced challenges but found a way to succeed. I hope these stories inspire you, too. Method 1. Speak as much as you can. Let me tell you about Ollie. Ollie was one of my most dedicated students, but he was painfully shy. The idea of speaking English terrified him. One day, he told me, Teacher, I'm scared. What if I make a mistake? What if people laugh at me? I smiled and said, Ollie, mistakes are not something to fear. They're something to celebrate. Every mistake is like a step forward. Without them, we cannot learn. I encouraged Ollie to start with small, simple sentences like, Hello, my name is Ollie, and I like to play football. Every day, he practiced with me repeating these phrases until they felt comfortable. At first, Ollie's voice was very soft, almost like a whisper, but gradually he became braver. He started practicing with his friends and even strangers. Sometimes he would make mistakes and feel embarrassed, but I reminded him that every mistake was a sign of progress. Over time, Ollie's confidence grew. One day, he volunteered to introduce himself in front of the whole class. I will never forget his smile as he said, Hello, everyone. My name is Ollie, and I am happy to learn English with you. The whole class clapped, and Ollie beamed with pride. Speaking every day, even just a few sentences, was the key to his success. Now he's one of the best English speakers in his family, and he even helps his younger siblings practice. Method 2. Learn new words with fun activities. 
Learning vocabulary can sometimes feel boring, so I always try to make it fun. Mariam, one of my younger students, had a hard time remembering new words. She loved English but struggled with vocabulary. Teacher, she would say. I forget the words so easily. To help Mariam, I suggested that she draw pictures of each new word she learned. For example, when she learned the word apple, she drew a bright red apple and wrote the word below it. When she learned zun, she drew a big yellow sun with rays shining out. She created an entire notebook filled with colorful pictures of all the words she was learning. The notebook became her special English dictionary. She would look through it every night before bed, reviewing her drawings and repeating the words. Not only did this make learning more enjoyable for her, but it also helped her remember the words much better. Soon she knew over a hundred words, and her confidence soared. She would proudly show her notebook to her friends, saying, Look, I know all these words in English. One day, she even created a vocabulary game for her classmates. She would hold up one of her drawings, and they had to guess the word in English. This game became popular and her classmates looked forward to it every week. Miriam's creativity made learning fun, and now she knows so many words that she helps her younger sister with English. Method 3. Listen. Everyday listening is one of the best ways to get used to the sound of English. Reza, another student of mine, had a lot of trouble understanding spoken English. He would say, Teacher, people speak so fast I can't understand them. I knew that he needed to make English part of his daily life, so I suggested that he listen to English every day, even if it was just a few minutes. Reza started small, listening to short English songs and watching cartoons in English. At first, he could only understand a few words here and there, but he kept going. Every evening he would put on his headphones and listen to an English song before he went to sleep. He didn't understand every word, but he loved the rhythm and sounds. After a few weeks, he started watching simple English videos with subtitles. He would pause the video, repeat sentences, and try to understand each line. It was hard work, but he was determined. Slowly, he began to understand more. One day during class, we watched a video together, and he raised his hand. Teacher, I understood that part, he said, smiling proudly. Listening every day helped Reza build his confidence and develop his understanding of natural English. Now he listens to English podcasts about football, his favorite sport, and he even teaches his friends a few English phrases. Method 4. Practice Writing. Short Sentences. Writing in English was difficult for many of my students, including Sarah. Sarah felt she would never be able to write even a single sentence in English. She would say, Teacher, I know the words, but I don't know how to put them together. I told her, Sarah, you don't have to write a long story, just write one sentence every day. Sarah started with the simplest sentences like, Today is sunny, or I like my cat. It was hard at first. Sometimes she would take five minutes just to think of one sentence. But each day she got a little better. Soon her sentences grew longer. She started writing about her family, her friends, and her dreams. She even began keeping a small journal where she wrote down her thoughts in English.
One day, Sarah showed me a short letter she had written to her friend. It was in English, and it was full of simple but beautiful sentences. I was so proud of her. Writing every day, even just a little bit, had helped her gain confidence. Now she loves writing letters to her family and friends, and she even helps her younger brother with his English homework. Method 5. Believe in yourself. Finally, the most important method of all, believe in yourself. Many of my students, like Ollie, Mariam, Reza, and Sarah, felt afraid at the beginning. They thought English was too hard or that they would never learn it. But I always told them, if you believe you can do it, you will succeed. If you believe you cannot, then you have already stopped yourself. One of my students, Ahad, had almost no confidence in his English. He would say, Teacher, I don't think I can learn. English is too hard. I looked at Ahad and said, Ahad, your mind is very powerful. If you tell yourself it's too hard, it will feel hard. But if you tell yourself you can learn, you will start to see possibilities. To help him, I created small goals each week. I gave him a simple challenge, like learning five new words or writing three sentences. Every time he completed a challenge, I reminded him of his progress. Slowly, he began to see that he was making progress. One day, he came to me and said, Teacher, I can do this. His eyes sparkled with confidence. Ahad began participating more in class, answering questions, and even speaking in front of his classmates. His belief in himself grew with each small success. Now he is one of the top students in my class. His confidence inspires others, and he often tells new students, believe in yourself and you can do anything. Final words to my students. So, my dear students, remember these methods. Speak as much as you can, learn new words in a fun way, listen to English every day, practice writing, and most importantly, believe in yourself. Learning a language is like climbing a mountain. It takes time and effort, but with each step, you get closer to the top. Every time I think of my students like Ollie, Mariam, Reza, Sarah, and Ahad, I feel so proud. They faced difficulties but never gave up. They remind me why I love teaching and why I never gave up on my own dream of becoming an English teacher. If they can do it, so can you. Remember, every small effort counts. With patience and practice, you will reach your goals. Keep going, and one day, you will look back and be amazed at how far you have come. Part 7 My final advice to you, my dear students. As we reach the end of this journey together, I want to share some final thoughts with you. Learning English is one of the most valuable skills in today's world. It is not just a subject, it's a bridge a bridge that connects people across different countries, cultures, and dreams. When you learn English, you're opening a door to many new opportunities. Let me tell you why speaking English can change your life. Imagine you're in a new country. You see people around you talking, laughing, and sharing stories. But if you don't understand English, you feel alone like you're watching from behind a glass window. Learning English breaks that glass. It lets you join the conversation, share your own stories, and make new friends. Many of my students ask me, Teacher, 
Is it really important to learn English? And my answer is always yes. English is the language of business, science, technology, and travel. With English, you can work in different parts of the world, watch movies, read books, and enjoy music from other countries. You can even study in international universities, opening doors to knowledge and growth. One of my students, Ali, dreamed of becoming an engineer and working abroad. He was very talented, but he knew that without English, his dream would be limited. So he worked hard, practicing every day. Now he works in a big company where he uses English daily, communicating with people from around the world. He often tells me, Teacher, learning English changed my life. It gave me confidence and opened doors I never thought possible. But remember, learning English is not just about words or grammar. It's about confidence. Speaking English might feel strange at first. You might worry about making mistakes or feeling embarrassed. But I want to tell you this. Do not be afraid of mistakes. Each mistake is like a step forward. Every time you try, you are one step closer to fluency. I once had a student named Farah who felt very shy speaking English. She was worried about her accent and grammar, but I told her, Farah, don't worry about perfection. Speak from your heart. The more you practice, the better you will become. Slowly, Farah grew more confident. She would start conversations, ask questions, and even give presentations in English. Today, Farah works as a manager and uses English every day. She tells her team, Our teacher taught us that English is not just a language. It's a way to connect, to inspire, and to succeed. So my advice to each of you is this. Practice. Practice every day, even if it's just a few minutes. Every bit helps. Speak English with your friends, write short notes to yourself, and listen to English songs. Surround yourself with English, and soon it will feel natural. Learning a language is like planting a seed. With patience, care, and practice, it will grow strong and tall. Lastly, Always believe in yourself. When you doubt yourself, remember the students I told you about. Ollie, Mariam, Reza, Sarah, Ahad, and Farah. They all had fears, but they never gave up. They trusted themselves, kept going, and reached their dreams. And you can do it too. Learning English is not just about the words you say. It's about the confidence and courage you build along the way. As your teacher, I am proud of each of you for your hard work and dedication. I believe in you, and I know that you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your journey. Remember, the world is waiting for you, and with English, you can go anywhere. So keep learning, keep speaking, and never stop believing in yourself. You are stronger and more capable than you know.